Welcome to class three of five lessons on learning how to sew. Today I am going to walk you through everything that you should know as a beginner sewer that you should not do as a beginner sewer. So let's jump into it. All right, so the very first thing that you need to know is this lovely hand wheel on your sewing machine only turn it towards you, never turn it away from you. When you turn it away from yourself, you're actually loosening the thread throughout the sewing machine and it's going to clog itself up and cause you some frustration. So only ever use this hand wheel, turning it towards yourself. The second thing that you should know is to never use your sewing needle for a really long time. Things can happen to your sewing machine needle that you don't even realize. They can bend, maybe you're working with some harder fabrics or you've been pulling on your fabric, don't do that, but you've been pulling on your fabric and so you've ended up bending your needle but you haven't noticed. Now you're ending up with sewing machine trouble and you can't figure out why. Definitely change that needle out. And if you have the right needle for your sewing machine fabric and it's a good, sharp, new needle that's straight, you will not end up with a lot of those sewing machine problems that people end up having. So as you're working through your projects, remember to replace your needles. That way you're always working with a good needle. Another thing to know about needles is that you should never sew through sticky stuff. Now there are Teflon sewing machine needles that you can buy that will allow you to sew through some of that sticky stuff. But what I recommend when you buy things like Velcro for projects, make sure that they do not have the sticky stuff on the back. Often it looks like it would be helpful because you just take the little paper off the back, it's nice and sticky, stick it to your fabric and then sew around. But as you sew around your sewing machine, has a harder time pushing that needle through properly, the thread starts to get gum up and the needle starts to gum up. And when that happens, you're not sewing anymore, you're just frustrated. So if you're going to use things like Velcro, make sure you buy a Velcro that does not have the sticky stuff on the back. I will definitely link in the description down below to the Velcro that I order. I've ordered this off Amazon and it is really easy to sew through and doesn't cause me that grief that the stuff with the sticky back causes me. I'm just gonna interrupt myself here to tell you that these lessons on learning how to sew are brought to you by this beginner's guide to sewing. I will have it linked in the description down below. I created this as I was making this sewing class for you because I realized there is so much helpful information that is easier to have in a paper format sitting with your sewing machine that you can refer to when needed. So definitely check that out. And now let's get back to learning how to sew. The next thing you should know if you buy yourself a really nice pair of fabric scissors. These fabric scissors are made in a way that allow you to cut your fabric without the fabric slipping through those two spots here. So this little edge here and the other edge there, they're actually cut in a way where they are micro serrated. And by being micro serrated, your fabric doesn't fold through your scissor, it actually cuts it really nicely. The problem being, if you use these scissors to say, cut out your pattern before you cut out your fabric, or cut through paper, uh, it's going to dull your scissor really, really quickly. And these are expensive and they can last you a very long time if you care for them properly. So some people keep these things under lock and key so their family members don't come across their fabric scissors and use them for anything but fabric. My favorite fabric scissors are these Ginger fabric scissors here. They have lasted me 16 years so far. I haven't even had to sharpen them yet. So I highly recommend checking them out. I will link to these in the description down below as well. Like I said, do not use these for anything but fabric. The next thing you should not do is skip pre-washing your fabric. Now this do not rule has some exceptions. Dry clean only fabric, bring it to the dry cleaner and have it dry cleaned before you start working on it. Uh, if you are a quilter, some quilters like to leave their fabric alone. That way, once the quilting process is done and they throw it in the washer and dryer, then it gets that nice crinkled effect. 
But if you're making clothing and you're using fabric that can, after the item has been made, be thrown in the washer and dryer, definitely pre-wash that fabric first. That way you don't end up with your beautiful outfit that you made perfect dress. Oh, it fits you beautifully and now you wash it and it's shrunk. That would suck. So always pre-wash your fabric before starting your project. Another do not though is actually do not pre-wash your batting. If you pre-wash your batting, what's going to end up happening is it's going to turn into a big ball of dough. You're going to open your washing machine and you're going to see that all of your batting has just lumped together and it's no longer in this nice flat form that you see here. So unless you've read your instructions and it says that you can, I highly recommend staying away from pre-washing your batting. Next, we are going to move on to bobbins. Different sewing machines use different bobbins. Do not use the wrong bobbin in the wrong machine. Often your older sewing machines want these nice metal bobbins here. Your newer sewing machines like these plastic bobbins here. Another thing to note about bobbins is do not overfill your bobbin. If you overfill your bobbin, it will actually cause you issues as you start sewing with your sewing machine. You can end up with a big bird's nest above your bobbin when you look inside it. You've ended up with a big knot in your fabric and that's from overfilling your bobbin or not filling your bobbin correctly. When you don't fill your bobbin correctly, what can happen is your thread can end up in a bit of a fat on the bottom, narrow on the top section here, like you can see, or even worse, it's loose thread. As you can see, this is a very, very loose thread. So you do not want to have your thread loose and you do not want to have your bobbin where everything has been wound up nicely on the base, but not evenly on the top. Again, that will cause you problems when you start sewing. So make sure that you're filling your bobbin properly and using the correct bobbin. Another very important thing to note is to never sew over your needles. Some people do, they risk it. Some people say that they buy particular needles that are softer or narrower so they never actually hit the needle. But as a beginner sewer, just don't risk it. Don't sew over those needles. Take that needle out before you get to the point where you're sewing over it. The reason being, your sewing machine needle can actually end up sewing and hitting your needle. And when it hits your needle, you're going to break your sewing machine needle. And once that sewing machine needle breaks, where does that little end piece go? It either goes flying, and so now you're endangering your eyes, or it falls into the sewing machine. And if it falls into your sewing machine, now you have to go look for it. And by looking for it, you may mess up some of your pieces in your sewing machine. So it's just best not to sew over these pins. And if you don't sew over these pins, you won't break your sewing machine needle and you won't have all of those extra issues. And that is my everything that you should not do when sewing. So if you want more helpful information, definitely check out the link down below. I will have this beginner's guide to sewing linked down there, as well as my free beginner's guide to sewing terms linked down below. Definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you don't miss next week's tutorial where I walk you through everything that you need to know when trying to troubleshoot your sewing machine. You've got some problems with that sewing machine. Let's fix them. All right, I hope that you have a wonderful day. See you next time, bye.